dehydrated versus freeze dried. Is there a difference? What is the difference? And more importantly, which one is better for your food storage? Let's duke it out and see if we can determine the winner. Hey guys, it's Jara with Wicked Prepared. Welcome back everyone. If you're watching the channel, I would say it's safe to assume, like us, you've got some concerns about the things going on in the world today. I mean, it's been one thing after another for like three years now. This week, we're dealing with everything from sabotage chicken feed to Chinese spy balloons. So if you've not been living under a rock, you've probably got a fair amount of concern about what's to come. And you've probably decided that building a good home food storage is one way you want to prepare yourself for hard times we may be facing. Because no matter what, we all face hard times at some point. So in building your food storage, you've probably heard a lot about dehydrated foods and freeze dried foods. We've had a lot of people ask us lately about the difference between dehydrated and freeze dried, or if there even is a difference at all. So I thought I would do a video going over what each of these is, how they're the same, how they're different, what each process is, and the pros and cons of each of these methods of food preservation. Because each is deserving of a place in your home, both your everyday pantry and your emergency food storage. I think probably everyone knows what dehydrated food is. Dehydrating has been around, well, probably since the dawn of time. I'm sure our cave dwelling ancestors somehow figured out how to dehydrate fruits and berries in the sun or laid out on a rock next to the fire. Dehydrating is the process of using moderate levels of heat to remove moisture from the food by evaporation. Nowadays, this typically involves a heat source and a fan to circulate the warm air. You can purchase dehydrated foods. Some common examples are raisins, prunes, dehydrated mushrooms, dried apricots, or beef jerky. You can also dehydrate food yourself at home. And if you dehydrate at home, there's a huge array of things that you can dehydrate. Freeze drying, on the other hand, is a relatively new technology. Thus, why people are less familiar with it and tend to get confused when they hear the term. A lot of people mistakenly think that it's just another term meaning the same thing as dehydrated. So as a little bit of history on freeze drying, I have read that the Incas supposedly figured out how to freeze dry potatoes at high altitudes. Honestly, from what I've read about what they actually did, I really personally wouldn't call it freeze drying, but anyhow, freeze drying as we know it today was invented around the early 1900s, believe it or not. For the first half of the century, it was mostly used by the military for medical and pharmaceutical purposes during World War II, for example. Then, of course, in the 1960s, NASA began using it for the space program. I mean, is there any kid out there who grew up in the 80s who didn't buy the astronaut ice cream from a gift shop somewhere? It wasn't until the 1980s that freeze-dried food became popular in commercial food applications for everyday consumers. And it was only about 10 short years ago from today that the technology became available for home freeze drying. Like dehydration, freeze drying is a process designed to extend shelf life by removing moisture from food, but how it's done is different. The freeze drying process involves freezing the food in a deep freeze and then lowering the pressure around it. This initiates a process called sublimation. And this means that the ice crystals in the food become vaporized and are removed from the food without passing through the liquid or thawing phase. The water goes from the solid phase to the gas phase without passing through liquid because of the pressure, which is pretty amazing. Although the goal of both processes is the same, to preserve the food and extend the shelf life by removing moisture, the results are pretty different. Let's compare some of the statistics between dehydrated and freeze-dried foods. Shelf life. Freeze-dried food has a shelf life of 25 years or more when stored properly. Dehydrated food, it can vary. Usually it's anywhere from six months to two years at the, at the top limit. The amount of moisture removed from the food. In freeze drying food, about 99% of the moisture is removed. Dehydrating usually removes 80 to 90%. Nutrition retention. When food is freeze dried, it retains about 97 to 99% of the original nutrition in the food. When food is dehydrated, it can lose up to 50% of its nutrients. Change in volume or reduction in size. In freeze dried, there's really no change in size. It comes out just to the same size that it went in. With dehydration, it can shrink up to two thirds smaller than the food originally was. So just by looking at these statistics, you can kind of see a lot of the pros and cons between both of these types of food preservation. So I've got a few examples here that I can show you just to see the difference between freeze dried food and dehydrated food. Now these are green beans, corn, and peas from a vegetable mix. This top row has been dehydrated and this bottom row has been freeze dried. So you can see, so you can kind of see the difference 
how they've gotten uh, dark and shriveled when they've been dehydrated um, versus the ones that were freeze-dried that look pretty much normal. They do have a little bit of a frosty tone to them, which kind of disappears when you add the water back and they get that um, dark, deep color back. And another difference with veggies like these, um, when they've been dehydrated, they're going to be really hard. If I were to try to snack on these dehydrated ones, I'd probably very possibly break my teeth. Whereas the freeze-dried ones, I could just eat as is. They have a very light, um, crunchy texture, almost like the texture of a cheese puff or something like that. Now that's not true for all um, dehydrated versus freeze-dried. The freeze-dried is always going to be edible dry, but some things that are dehydrated are not going to be super hard like these. Um, certain things are going to be really, really pretty edible and tasty when they're dehydrated. Things like raisins and things like apricots. A lot of the fruits are just going to get soft and sticky and extra sweet when they're dehydrated. Now here's another example, grapes. What's going to happen to grapes when you dehydrate them? You're going to get raisins. That's kind of an entirely different food. Now these grapes over here have been freeze dried, so you can see that they look more like a grape. These grapes were sliced before they were freeze dried because something like grapes with a thick skin on it, if you put it in whole into the freeze dryer, it's going to be really, really, really difficult to get it completely dry because the skin's going to hold the moisture in. So they either need to have holes made in them or be cut in half or sliced like these were. But you can see that these look more like the actual grape. And these actually taste like grapes, whereas these are now a raisin. They have a totally different taste and texture. If you were to put these in water, they would definitely swell up, but they're never going to really go back to being a real grape. And then here's another similar example. These were cranberries. So when they've been dried out, you're going to get craisins when they're dehydrated. We love craisins, but these over here are freeze dried and you can see they still resemble the fresh cranberry. Of course, these also were sliced because they have a skin like that. You could do them in halves and some people will just puncture a hole into them and they usually freeze dry okay, but these have been sliced. But once again, these are both cranberries and these have been dehydrated and these have been freeze dried. There are a lot of ways in which freeze dried food shines over dehydrated foods. You know what I always say, freeze drying is the gold standard in food preservation. Some of the pros of freeze drying, number one in a lot of people's minds is the shelf life. When sealed properly, most freeze dried foods have a shelf life of 25 or more years far more than any other form of food preservation. But what does sealed properly mean? If you purchase commercially freeze-dried food that's intended for food storage, it's usually sealed inside metal cans with an oxygen absorber. Although some companies may use Mylar bags. You can buy some freeze-dried foods, mostly fruits, in regular plastic packaging from the grocery store, but those are meant purely for snacking and they will not make it for long-term storage. That packaging just isn't meant for long term. If you freeze dry food yourself at home, most people will use either Mylar bags or glass mason jars with oxygen absorbers to store the food. Even after opening and discarding the oxygen absorber, you usually have about a year to use up your freeze dried food and it won't require refrigeration during this time. Another pro of freeze dried food is the nutrition factor. That's what really got me hooked. For so long, I thought that eating out of our emergency food stores would mean spam, canned soups, canned chilies, basically just a very sorry lack of nutrition. So to find out that there was a better option nutrition-wise was life-changing. There's no other form of food preservation that we rely on for SHTF situations that can preserve nutrients like freeze-drying can. Like I mentioned earlier, freeze-drying maintains 97 to 99% of the nutrients in the food. Canning and dehydrating both because of the heat used for the process cause significant loss of nutrients, especially nutrients like vitamin A and vitamin C. Freezing maintains nutrients fairly well, but because it's reliant on the power grid, it's not appropriate for emergency food storage, which needs to be shelf stable. So the nutrition aspect of freeze dried is a huge plus for a lot of folks, especially those who feel like they can't really have an emergency food storage because they prefer eating fresh and unprocessed foods. Freeze dried is by far the closest you'll get to that. Besides maintaining the nutrition, freeze drying also does the best job of maintaining the original shape, color, and flavor of the food. Dehydrating food changes the food. It shrinks, shrivels, and darkens. Even if you soak it in liquid, it will never truly go back to its original form. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Think of all the wonderful foods that we get from dehydration like raisins, fruit leather, and my favorite, beef jerky. But with freeze drying, the food coming out of the machine looks exactly the same as it did going in. 
And when refreshed, it's often hard to tell the difference as well, especially with proteins like meats and cheeses. The freeze drying process maintains the cellular structure of the food rather than collapsing it like dehydrating does. This is a big plus in general concerning the quality of the food, but it can also be a negative as well. Because the cells are still open like that, they're really thirsty to refill with moisture. If you've ever had a can of freeze dried fruit go stale on you, you know what I'm talking about. It can absorb moisture from the air very quickly and lose that crisp crunch that we love so much about snacking on freeze dried fruits and veggies. It gets chewy. It's really only an issue with those things that we would snack on dry, which is mostly fruits. If you'll be cooking it or using it in recipes, you would never notice it. It can be avoided in a few different ways. Number one, buy or package your freeze dried food in smaller packages that you can use up faster. Number two, use desiccant packs. You know those moisture absorbing packets. They're different from oxygen absorbers. They're a totally different thing. I will link the moisture packets I'm talking about down below so that you can check them out and see exactly what I'm talking about. If you're like me and you buy your freeze dried food in the larger sizes to save money, you can repackage it into smaller amounts in mason jars once you open them up and vacuum seal the jars you're not using. Number three, if you have some fruit that has gone soft, you can usually recrisp it by putting the closed container into the fridge or the freezer. But if I have something that gets that gets like that, I usually just use it up in a recipe. It's great in smoothies, it's good in pies, you can add it to cookies, it can even be used in canning recipes. I've made mango chutney and raspberry lemonade concentrate with freeze dried fruit, just to name a few examples. Now freeze dried food looks just like its fresh counterpart, but when you pick it up, you'll instantly realize that it's freeze dried because not only is it bone dry, but it's light as a feather almost like cheese puffs or styrofoam. Which leads me to another plus that freeze dried food has going for it. Because it's so light, it's beloved by many people for things like backpacking, RVing, boating, and traveling. You can pack a whole lot of food without adding much extra weight and without needing any refrigeration. Another positive attribute of freeze drying as a means of food preservation is that it can be used to preserve many types of food that couldn't be dehydrated. Things like dairy, ice cream and meat, for example. Yes, meat can be de dehydrated to make jerky, but we couldn't replace all of the meat in our cooking with beef jerky. So whether you purchase freeze dried food or you have a home freeze dryer and freeze your own, it really expands the options that you can have in your food storage. With all these pros, you might be wondering, are there any cons to freeze drying? The biggest negative with freeze dried food is honestly the price. Whether you purchase it commercially or you freeze dry it yourself, it's just gonna cost more than other types of food preservation. It's an expensive technology. It's very energy heavy, it uses a lot of energy, and so the food costs more in the long run. If you're buying freeze dried food, you might get a little sticker shock when you first see the price. And if you wanna freeze dry yourself, you'll probably have some sticker shock at the cost of the machine, the supplies, the electricity, and all of that. So that's definitely the biggest trade-off, but there are so many pros to that type of food that a lot of people find it worth it. It's becoming a lot more common and a lot more mainstream. It really is the future of food preservation. It's like that next step in improving like our food preservation methods that we have available to us. So what are the pros and cons of dehydrated food? Well, the cons are basically things I've already listed. Um, the fact that it loses some nutrients and it changes the texture, the size, the shape, the taste of the food. But what are some of the pros of dehydrated food? Well, one of the biggest pros is the fact that it does change the size of the food. So when you dehydrate food, you can fit a lot more food into a smaller package. Take this for example, this is a quart sized jar of mixed vegetables that I dehydrated. These were frozen mixed vegetables that I stuck in my dehydrator. And I believe it was, it was either five or six one pound bags of frozen mixed vegetables that I fit into this quart sized jar when they were all dehydrated. So that was a really, really big reduction in size. I can fit a lot more food in a much smaller space. Whereas freeze dried food is gonna be the same size that it was to begin with. So you're not gonna save any space with that really. And the other big pro, the other big positive thing that dehydrating food has going for it and dehydrated food is that it's just much more affordable and more accessible to most people. Some dehydrated food is a lot easier to find at your everyday grocery store and the prices are something that we're used to paying. And if you wanna dehydrate your own, the machines are a lot more affordable. You can even find them a lot of the time at some place like the Goodwill for probably just five, 10, 15, $20. I would probably drop dead of a heart attack if I ever saw a freeze drying machine at the Goodwill. It's just gonna be a long time before we really ever see that. Although you can find them sometimes on you know, your marketplace, Craigslist, some things like that, but they're never gonna be 15, $20. And with dehydrating, you can even dehydrate um, in your oven. 
If your oven has a low enough temperature setting, you can use your oven to dehydrate. A lot of people do that. And another pro um, with dehydrating and dehydration is that it actually is a method you could use to preserve your food in an emergency after SHTF, whereas freeze drying, you really wouldn't be able to do. People buy freeze dryers and freeze dried food to prepare for emergencies, to get it set up ahead of time. I have never found anyone so far who has been able to run a home freeze dryer completely off of a solar setup. So, you know, if you've been able to do that, please correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know down in the comments, you know, what's your setup and how you do that. I would love to know. But in general, a freeze dryer is something that you're going to use to prepare for emergencies and SHTF. It's not something that you're going to use in an emergency after SHTF. Whereas dehydrating is something that you could do. This could be done in the sun. You can do this um, in a solar oven. You could do this um, under the windshield of, of a car. And if we've had something like an EMP, your car may be nothing more than just a big clunky dehydrator. People used to make leather britches by stringing um, pieces of green bean up on a string and hanging them up behind their wood stove until they dehydrated. All sorts of different ways that you can use dehydration in an emergency situation. So that's something that I find really beneficial about dehydrating and knowing how to dehydrate. That's something that you're going to be able to do to preserve some food after SHTF. So this is my dehydrator. Um, Colzer is the brand name. I've been pretty happy with this one. I've had this for a while, probably a couple years now. Um, this was a little bit over $100, I think, when I got it off of Amazon at the time that I got it. It does have a latch that you open up. It's got eight of these trays, and these trays are like a mesh material. I do have a um, silicone like tray liner on some of these, but that's something that I added myself. I bought that separately. It does make it a lot easier to clean up and get the items off the trays, they don't stick. It's a lot easier to get them into jars. And here, of course, is the control panel where you can turn it on and off. You can set the temperature and you can set the time that it's gonna run. And it does have a little chart over here that gives some um, basic temperatures for some basic dehydrating um, tasks that you would do, but it did come with a manual and a recipe book that has anything that you could possibly wanna find in it. And of course, there's plenty of resources online and on YouTube about dehydrating different foods. Now, I've been very happy with one. If you want to get the top of the line, a food dehydrator, the one that everybody, you know, seems to want to have, that's usually considered to be an Excalibur dehydrator. That's the brand that everybody covets. Um, but dehydrating is a pretty simple um, technology. So I really think that just about any dehydrator that you have is going to do the trick just fine. Now, this is our freeze drying machine. This is a Harvest Right brand opens up just like that and it's got um, a rack this one is a medium size so this one holds four different trays we've got the trays up here some extra trays the trays slide right in here it does have a control panel right up here this is where you set all the settings now this is a, a fairly large machine it's it's heavy it's not something that we move around the dehydrator I do carry uh, in and out of the kitchen I carry it up and down to the cellar when I'm not using it this we have to have a dedicated space for it um, We've got the machine and then the machines have a pump that goes with them. And so this is the pump that we have with ours. There's several different types of pumps that you can get. Now the pump obviously is what creates the vacuum. So this machine does several things. It cools um, basically like an industrial strength freezer. This can cool to very low temperatures and it can also create a vacuum with the vacuum pump. Now just to show you the tray size, this is the Harvest Right medium size tray. This is the most popular machine that the vast majority of people purchase. This is the size of the tray and it takes four of these trays. You do get a little bit different capacity if you get a large machine. The trays are a little bit larger and it holds five of them. Likewise, if you get a small machine, the trays are a little bit smaller and I believe the small only holds three. They actually, Harvest Right just came out with an XL machine. I'm not real familiar with that one because it's brand spanking new. It only came out a few weeks ago. Now the Harvest Right brand is pretty much synonymous with home freeze drying. They were the first company to come out with a home freeze dryer and until just recently they were really the only company that made a home freeze dryer. If you were interested in home freeze drying this was the place to go and um, there have been a couple of other companies since there's been so much of a huge influx of interest in freeze drying and freeze dried food and all that. It's like people are really starting to finally discover freeze drying and all of the wonderful things about it. 
So there's been a lot of more a lot of extra interest in it, especially with everything that has been going on in the world lately. So there have been a couple other companies that have started coming out with home freeze dryers. They're all very, very new companies and I really don't know much about them. I only know about Harvest Right. This is what we have. I do think that it's definitely going to be a positive thing in the long run. I think having um, some some competition in the market is going to be good for everyone. It's going to be good for prices. It's going to be good for quality and innovation. It's just going to be really a great thing. But just to kind of show you the difference here, this is um, one of the trays from our freeze drying machine and this is one of the trays from our dehydrating machine. Now keep in mind, our freeze dryer has four of these trays and the dehydrator has eight of these trays. But it is quite a bit quicker to run a batch of dehydrated food than it is to run a batch of freeze dried food for the most part. I mean, I'm sure there's exceptions to the rule, but it probably takes at least twice as long to do a batch of freeze dried food as it does to do a batch of dehydrated food. And it depends on the food, but now both freeze drying and dehydrating are both fairly lengthy processes, but freeze drying is definitely a longer process. Dehydrating, depending on what you're dehydrating, how, you know, thin it is, it can take anywhere from four up to 24 hours at the very most. But most of the things I've dehydrated have been done within the same day. Freeze drying on the other hand takes a long time, usually at least 24 hours. I don't think we've had a single thing that's been done in less than 24 hours, um, except for candy, which gets done a lot more quickly. Freeze dried candy is actually a really popular and really fun thing. And there's actually a lot of people who have financed the purchase of their freeze dryer by selling freeze dried candy to pay for the machine. Some people have been able to pay for multiple machines just by selling freeze dried candy that they make in their machine, but that's something that you'd really have to know the cottage laws in your state before you decided to do something like that. But the good thing about both of these processes, even though they're long processes, is they're both pretty much set it and forget it kind of processes. Um, you kind of, you know, need to be around to check if your food's done, but like with the dehydrator, you know, I can set mine to go a certain amount of time and shut off and I feel very comfortable running with both of these types of machines running at night or running if I'm not home. I feel perfectly safe doing that. Freeze dryers, you can set them with extra dry time at the end. You can set it up to 24 hours so you have plenty of time for it to just continue doing its thing if you're not around to check it or to, you know, stop it and package it and everything. So they're both pretty much set it and forget it uh, methods, much different than something like canning where you really have to be present and have to be doing a lot of things. So. I would say that freeze drying is a little more set it and forget it than the dehydrating. As far as which one I do more, I have definitely think I've used my freeze dryer more than my dehydrator. And I think a big part of that is because like I said, this has a permanent place in our kitchen right now. This does not. I've had to remove this from the kitchen. It just doesn't have a space. So it's kind of a little bit more difficult. I have to go bring it up and set it up and get it ready every time I want to use it. Whereas this is just right there, the freeze dryer. And the other thing is both of these, both of these methods are going to require some time and some preparation. Like you're going to have to cut your food, slice your food, prepare your food in whatever way you want it on the freeze dryer. So if you're a busy person and you don't have a lot of spare time, honestly, neither one of these might be for you. And maybe you're better off just buying your freeze dried and dehydrated food. Another reason I've probably done more freeze drying is because Mr. Wicked Prepared has taken an interest in the freeze dryer a particular interest in that and so he has been able to do a lot of the prep work and helping out with that and do a lot of the freeze drying himself whereas the dehydrator is pretty much just my thing well guys i hope this has been helpful i hope that even if you already knew the difference between freeze dried and dehydrated i hope that maybe you learned a little bit of something new that you didn't already know i'll have links down in the description box to all of the machines that we have and the other ones that i mentioned in case you're interested in getting into dehydrating or freeze drying food at home I'll also have links to some of our favorite um, resources for buying dehydrated food and freeze dried food online because I do have a freeze dryer. I do have a dehydrator. I do both of those forms of food preservation at home, but I also still purchase both of those types of food also. It really just depends on a lot of things. It depends on prices, deals, sales. It depends on how much time I have to prepare food and you know, get it ready for processing, things like that. Now let's just take a few seconds here to talk about this beef jerky. I am absolutely in love with this meat. Just don't tell Mr. Wicked Prepared. Shh. Seriously, these guys have so many different cuts, flavors, different variety packs. They even have little jars with just the seasonings. All of this straight out of Texas. 
These are great for backpacking, hiking, and bug out bags, of course, but they also make wicked good gifts, maybe even for that special Valentine of yours. Head on over to Wicked Cuts by clicking through our link down in the description, and a $50 order gets you free shipping delivered right to your door. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave me a sunshine emoji down in the comments. I'm Jarrah with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow. We'll see you next time.